Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands a wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready my eyes, I will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine, open my ears that I may hear. Voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready my eye, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me. Spirit divine, open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my eyes I will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. Amen. Amen. Let us begin our service. Thank you everyone for that beautiful music. We'd like to invite everyone to a word of prayer. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, in the precious holy name of our Savior Yeshua HaMashiach, may the meditation of my mind be directed from me. And while I am preaching, I am hearing you also. Correct me and guide me and Bless, bless the equipment and bless those who are helping the staff. Bless them. We ask your blessings upon those who are viewing and those who are present. We ask that you may prepare us and help us to understand your message. Find us faithful to give this message to win souls into your kingdom. And forgive us of our sins our transgressions. In the name of Yeshua we pray. And Yahshua's people said, Amen. 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 <coughs> Excuse me. The Third of One Angels Ministries presents the Day of Judgment, Part Two. Turn with me to Daniel Chapter Seven. Daniel Chapter Seven, and uh, in this part we will be doing some reading that will help quite a few of us in understanding the judgment. So as we turn to Daniel chapter 7, bear with me. And if you're there, may I hear an amen. Amen. Daniel chapter 7 and beginning with verse 9. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the stones were cast down and the ancient of the days did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Mercy. Verse 10. Now we'll be reading the records of sin. Verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. Amen. Mercy. So there's the judgment's been set and the books are open so that means that there's more than one book. Let us view into the scriptures and find out what has happened. 
Is it biblical, ladies and gentlemen? There are many people saying that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is wrong on this issue. Oh, no, they're not. And let us prove a point. Number one, the investigative judgment is found in Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, 10, and 11. Verse 11, and in your hearing, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horns speak, I beheld even till the beast was slain. Amen? Mm. And his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. So you know that there is something already prepared for the end of time. You also find it in the 1884 Great Controversy, page 307, all the way to 320, my brothers and sisters. Now let me put this down for a few minutes because I like to do some reading and comparison so that we can all be on the same page. Now, what I am going to share here, ladies and gentlemen, is something that has been given to us for many, many years, but there has been so much corruption, ladies and gentlemen, nobody's been given a hoot, excuse the language. This is the investigative judgment. I didn't have it on the screen or prepare it on there because I want to share it from the source. So everything in blue is correct, the investigative judgment, but they changed the topic entitled in red, Facing Life's Record. Well, that's not the topic. As we focus on the screen, <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Bear with me, I call a little sneeze. The investigative judgment is very, very powerful, and it reads as follows. The correct reading would begin, I beheld, says the prophet Daniel, but in your 1911, 1887, 1907, 1888, and your 1888 and the 1887 was printed in Australia, it's the same as the 1884. However, if they have no dates, it's the same as the 1911. And the 1887, 1888 that was printed in Pacific Press in Oakland, California, they're corrupt to the core. It's the same as the 1911. Ain't nobody going to get anywhere there. Because it's not inspired. It's never been, it hasn't been dictated. W.W. W. Prescott, the Vice President of the General Conference, prepared that book, along with Willie White, Uriah Smith, Haskell and Wagner. And it would read in the 1911 opening, Thus was presented to the prophet's vision. Whoa, that's totally wrong. Here's what it says correctly. I beheld, says the prophet Daniel, till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. That's the father. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as the burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near him, near before him, that's Yeshua, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. Your page number is Great Controversy, 1884, page 307, paragraph 1. This was presented to the prophet's vision, who is Daniel, the opening of the investigative judgment. The coming of Christ here described is not his second coming to the earth. He comes to the Ancient of Days in heaven to receive dominion and glory and a kingdom which will be given him at the close of his mediatorial work. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now I'm going to read further down in what they omitted. In reading and your hearing, says, well, let me do it this way. Says John, out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Angels of God have kept a faithful record of the lies of all, and they are to be judged according to their deeds. In view of this judgment, Peter es escorted the men of Israel, and says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted. Number one, repent. Number two, be converted. That your sins may be blotted out, 
when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 This is beautiful. Said because it's been dictated. The prophet was inspired to give us the information of what would take place. Ladies and gentlemen, we begin now. After discussing the investigative judgment partially of it, we'll begin here in a few. And as I close in the last paragraph, Christ, de Christ himself declares, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father. That's an amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. And before amen. his angels, again he said to his disciples, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Mercy. Mercy. This is the investigative judgment, my brothers. Partial. Second, the sentencing judgment. Sentencing judgment. And let's go to page... Uh, 473 473 and it'll just be a few pages over for those of you that got the book I know many of you have the book and for those that do not have it uh, you all you have to do is call the ministry and we'll gladly uh, prepare it and send it out to you but we need an address we need a name 447 correct mm -hmm. uh -huh. Four seven. no it's 473 oh, excuse me I gotta turn it over here 473. I'm not in a hurry here, ladies and gentlemen. I know many of us are, but we are reviewing the books. 473. Am I correct? Yes. yes. 473. You know, they really did a, a very confusing job on these books. Uh, and, you know, it takes time to do all this work. And of course, many other of the brothers have done some, some work with it as well. You want to praise our Savior for that. Uh, page 473. Ooh, page 473. Bear with me, 473. And uh, here we go, right here. Let's focus on the screen. So we got 473, the sensing judgment. In reading and in your hearing, please, the sanctuary. No, it is the sentencing judgment. At the close of the thousand years, Christ again returns to earth, to the earth. He is accompanied by the law, by the host of the redeemed, and attended by a red tomb of angels. As he descends in terrific majesty, he bids the wicked dead arise to receive their doom. And I'm reading from the great controversy ended. Okay. And in the book, it's on page 378. Second paragraph, every eye in that vast multitude is turned to behold the glory of the Son of God. With one voice, the wicked host exclaim, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. It is not love to Jesus that inspires this utterance. The force of truth urges the words from unwilling lips. And the wicked went into their graves, so they come forth with the same enmity to Christ and the same spirit of rebellion. Stay with me. They are to have no new probation, comma, in which to remedy the defects of their past lives. Nothing would be gained by this. A lifetime of transgression has not softened their hearts. A second probation, bear with me, here's the key, were it given them would be occupied as was the first in invading the requirements of God and exciting the rebellion against Him. Christ descends upon the Mount of Olives and as His feet touch the mountain, it parts asunder and becomes a vast plain. Then, the new Jerusalem in its dazzling splendor comes down out of heaven as it rests upon the place purified and made ready to receive it. Christ, with His people and the angels, enters the holy city. 
Now Satan prepares for a vast mighty struggle for the supremacy. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the sentencing judgment. Introduction. Number three, the executive judgment is on page 480. Page 480. Just one over. Page 480. In reading and in your hearing, please. Here's where the executive judgment begins in your books. In this book, it would be on page 380, second paragraph. Okay? In your 1884 Great Controversy, it would be on page 480, paragraph 2, in reading. And before I do go there, let me gently go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 and 12. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 and 12. Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11 and 12. In reading and in your blessings, my brothers and sisters. Revelation chapter 20, 11 and 12. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, that's Yeshua HaMashiach, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim, and the books were opened. That means there's more than one. And another book was opened. That means there's three, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Very plainly said, my brothers and sisters. Now, as we look at the scriptures here, and we look at the screen, let us focus on the screen. And as we focus on the screen, we know that there are key things being done. Okay? Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. I said I couldn't see it at first. Let me read now. Rebel, uh, Great Controversy, 1884 edition, page 480, paragraph 2. This is the start of the executive judgment. In the presence of the assembled inhabitants of earth, and heaven takes place the final coronation of the Son of God. And now invested with supreme majesty and power, the King of Kings pronounces sentence upon the rebels against his government and executes justice upon those who have transgressed his law and oppressed his people. Says the prophet of God, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for him. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. As soon as the books of record are opened, my brothers and sisters, and the eye of Jesus looks upon the wicked, they are conscious of every sin which they have ever committed. They see just where their feet di diverged from the path of purity and holiness. Just how far pride and rebellion have carried them in the violation of the law of God. The seductive temptations which they encouraged by indulgence in sin. The blessings perverted the messengers of God despised, the warnings rejected, the waves of mercy beaten back by the stubborn, unrepentant heart, all appear as if written in letters of fire. Mercy. Above the throne is revealed the cross, and like a panoramic view appear the scenes of Adam's temptation and fall, and the successive steps in the great plan of redemption, the Savior's lovely birth, his early life of simplicity and obedience, his baptism in Jordan, the fast and temptation in the wilderness, his public ministry unfolding to men, heaven's most precious blessings, the days crowded with deeds of love and mercy, the nights of prayer and watching in the solitude of the mountains, the plottings of envy, hate, and malice, which repaid his benefits, the awful mysteries, agony, Excuse me, the awful, mysterious agony 
in Gethsemane. Agony. Beneath the crushing weight of the sins of the whole world, his betrayal into the hands of the murderous mob, the fearful events of night, of that night, excuse me, of horror, the unresting prisoner forsaken by his best loved disciples, rudely hurried through the streets of Jerusalem, the Son of God exalted, displayed by before Ananias, arraigned in the high priest's palace, in the judgment hall of Pilate, before the cowardly and cruel Herod, mocked, insulted, tortured, and condemned to die, all are vividly portrayed. And now before the swaying multitude are revealed the final scenes, the patient sufferer treading the path to Calvary, the Prince of Heaven hanging upon the cross, the high priest and the jeering rabble deriding his expiring agony, the supernatural darkness, the, he the heaving earth, the rent rocks, the open graves, marking the moment when the world's re Redeemer yielded up his life with an awful spectacular event that occurred. How horrible the investigative judgment has been set. The sentencing has been set. The investigative judgment is foretold. Are you ready for the judgment? A. Ancient of Days did sit found in Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, 10, and 13 and 14. The Ancient of Days is Yeshua, is Yahweh's Father, our Father, Elohim Yahweh. B, at the close of the thousand years, Ezekiel 9, 6. C, in the presence of the assembled inhabitants of the world, Isaiah 26, verse 21. One, the investigative judgment, the Ancient of Days did sit. Two, the sentencing judgment, B, at the close of the thousand years. Three, the executive judgment, C, in the presence of the assembled inhabitants all over the world. 1884 Great Controversy, quotations coming from the original source. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Revelation 20, verse 11 and 12. Your Great Controversy, 1884 edition, page 481, paragraph 1. 1. Zechariah 14, 12 to 13. And this shall be the plague. Yes. The people, the wicked, shall receive the plagues. Richard. We are at a very serious time, ladies and gentlemen. Number two, Jeremiah 25, verse 33, and the slain of the <coughs> Lord. Number three, Isaiah 24, verses 1, 3, 5, and 6, because they have transgressed the laws, one, changed the ordinances, two, broken the everlasting covenant found in Genesis 26, verse 5. This covenant, ladies and gentlemen, that was given in Genesis 25, verse 26 verse 5 is the same as the one in the New Testament. The covenant of obeying the statutes, the judgments, and the ordinances, the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments that are behind me <coughs> is a summary of 613 laws. The first, second commandment are commandments. However, the third, the fourth, and the fifth are statutes. These are statutes. And the remaining five are judgments. This is what guards and exalts the character of Yahweh. However, the statutes on top, the judgments on the side, and the ordinances on the other left-hand side is what guards and protects the moral law. During the thousand years between the first and the second resurrection, the judgment of the wicked dead takes place. So the first resurrection and the second resurrection, which is of the dead, the thousand year period will be taking place. Judgment of the wicked. Judgment is referring to the day of enwonement when it finally comes to its fruition, ladies and gentlemen. The wicked are found guilty and are given perdition along with their leader. Hasatan. 
The righteous reign as kings and priests unto God, and in union with Christ they judge the wicked, comparing their acts with the statute book and the Bible. So we got two books, the statute book and the Bible. The statute book is referring to the book of Leviticus, and deciding every case according to the deeds done in the body. However, number one, the Bible is found in Daniel chapter 10, verse 21, as the written scriptures. Or may I better yet, let us open the scriptures. Let us go to Daniel chapter 10. And let's quickly review some very key points. In the book of Daniel, we find that the prophet has exalted what the real name of the scriptures are. And because of what Daniel has given to us, we will review a few key points in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 21. In reading and in your hearing. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scriptures of truth. That is the title of the books. Scriptures of truth. Can I hear an amen? Amen. That is the correct title. The statute book, on the other hand, is referring to the book of Leviticus. So let us turn to the book of Leviticus. It is, I believe, the third book in the book of Leviticus, and we will go to chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Now, in our other presentation, I pronounced various words, and I did it ignorantly here, my brothers and sisters, so I do ask for your, your grace. Now, there are certain animals that are not uh, healthy for us to eat. And we have to understand which ones are correct and which ones are not. Now, uh, biblically, clean fish must have both fins and scales. That's correct. Biblically, clean uh, red meat must chew the cud and have a divided hoof. Have a divided hoof. Okay? The antelope the, is beef, uh, buffalo, deer, elk, goat, the moose, and also the sheep. <clears throat> and of course, biblically clean fowl possesses elongated middle toe and hind toe crops and gizzards cannot be a reptile. Okay? Um, there are very key, important key points in regards to various types of fish. So if you want to eat fish, eat salmon. And get it from Alaska because it's cleaner. Now, when Fukushima took place, all that radiation came across the Pacific coast. Okay? So the crab, which is an unhealthy animal, a lot of them died. A lot of fish died. So the sea is still contaminated, but not as strong as it was when all these chemicals were being released, all this radiation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are foretold that we are in the middle of Matthew chapter 24, verses 6 through 9. Rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, tsunamis. Many issues are taking place, and food is being destroyed. Animals. Various types of animals. Various types of flying birds. Various types of sea animals. And now our vegetation is being attacked as well. But we also notice in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. Turn with me to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. And Yahweh speak unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Okay? So he begins to give us directions in which animals will be eaten. But ladies and gentlemen, these clean animals now that he's directed us to eat, or the fowl, or the sea animals, they are now being contaminated. They are not healthy. They are not healthy. Stay with me. As we look at the screen, let us look at the screen here, we will notice a few key points. Number two, the statute book is found in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 1 to 47. 
It's referring to the statue, the spring feast, the uh, feast of weeks, and the fall feast, referring to the Moeds, the Moedims, the feast, which are the seals, along with the weekly Sabbath. Number three, this is found in the 1884 Great Controversy, page 475, paragraph three. In reading and in your hearing, the righteous reign as, as kings and priests unto Elohim, and in union with Christ they judge the wicked, comparing their acts with the statute book, the Bible, and deciding every case according to the deeds done in the body. Okay? The statute book consists, God will not take into his kingdom and give eternal life to those who will not come under his laws and statutes in this life. So if we're not keeping his statutes, 2707, 2708, he's not going to give us eternal life. And let me read it in this manner. God will not take into his kingdom and give eternal life to those who will not come under his laws and statutes in this life. This statute here is 2707, 2708. It's binding forever. It's not nailed to the cross, my brothers. Your reference is found in Signs of the Times, September 8, 1887. Now, I want to share a diagram that can be exposed in this manner. Let's discuss the judgments. The statute book consists of the Moedims. There are eight of them. It's found in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 to 44. And these Moedims, this statute is 2708. So the Moedims is 2708, Hebrew number 2708. These are seals. And these seals, we will be keeping them in the new earth, new heaven. Okay? And so we will be keeping the week of unleavened bread, feast of weeks, and tabernacles. Amen. Amen. Thank you. This consists of worship, my brothers and sisters. It has nothing to do with the ceremonial laws. It has nothing to do with killing animals. It has nothing to do with turtle doves. It has nothing to do with any flower. It's all about worship. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. Because the animals ended in 31 AD. The animal sacrifices for the sanctuary ended. So when that curtain was torn in twine in the Most Holy of Holies, which was 25 inches thick, not even the priest had enough time to kill the lamb. It's over with. So, if people want to argue, we ask ourselves then, why are we killing animals on Sabbath? It is because it's been done away with. This is why there's no animal sacrifice throughout the spring feast, feast of weeks, and the feast of the fall. The fall feast. They're done away with, ladies and gentlemen. These are things of shadows of things to come to pass. Let me continue. One, Bible. The Bible discusses our Savior from Genesis to Revelation that exposes him to the core, Yeshua. Number two, in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 1 to 47, it discusses the clean food and the unclean meat that we are told not to eat. So therefore, if we break these laws, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to cause our bodies harmful sicknesses and diseases. Number three, Torah. Law. Your statutes and your judgments is found in Exodus chapter 21, 22, and 23. In Deuteronomy, we give you three more chapters. 26, 27, 28. They discuss the statutes and the judgments and the ordinances that are binding. Not the ordinances that have been nailed to the cross. That's all history. It's all nailed to the cross. The ceremonial laws were all nailed to the cross. So you can look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14. The enmity that was against us. Nailed to the cross. We can say amen to that. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 the ordinance says of the sanctuary that's nailed to the cross Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 is referring to the oblation the grain offerings that's nailed to the cross we can say glory hallelujah to that and first and foremost the animals various types they were used which was a type to mean anti-type until Christ came and fulfilled that prophecy all this and ceremonial laws is all nailed to the cross we don't keep any of that there's no more need of animals being sacrificed. This, my brothers and sisters, is binding. 
So what we'll keep in the new earth, new heavens, who was preparing for this, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the first and the seventh, and then after the seventh, which is a statute, it's the Sabbath, it's over with, then we count 50 days until we come to the Feast of Weeks. Glory, hallelujah. From the Feast of Weeks, we count 90 days. That's the statue on the first day. And on the eighth day is Shimei Azaret. That's a statue. Those are feasts. Those are the seals. And we've been missing blessings. I want to share with us, number one, the weekly Sabbath. Number two, Passover. Okay. Number three, unleavened bread. From the 15th to the 21st, is a complication. It's a statue. First fruits, number four. Statue. Number five, Feast of Weeks, it's Statue, 2708. Number six, Feast of Trumpets, it's a convocation, Sabbaton, that's a statue. Number seven, Day of Atonement, that's a statue. Number eight, Feast of Tabernacles, that we're in right now, that's a statue. It's a Moed. Hebrew number 4150, the first day, which would be the 15th, and the eighth day are binding. These are statutes, all of this. Now let me break it down in this manner. So we discussed, the first one was the weekly Sabbath, was a Shabbat, or Sabbaton. This is found in Leviticus 23, verse 5. This is a Passover, okay? In the month of Abib, okay? This is on, then we have, uh, that was the Passover. And then we come number three, Leviticus 23, verse 6 to 8, this is on leavened bread. The 15th and the 21st. Oh, is everything okay? So on the 15th is a statute, and on the 21st is a statute. It's the convocation. Hebrew word number 4744. These are statutes. Hebrew number 2708. Number four, first fruits. This is a statute. Hebrew number 2708. Number five, feast of weeks. This is a statute. Hebrew number 2708. Number six, Leviticus 23, verse 23 to 25, Feast of Trumpets. It's a statute, 2708. It's a convocation, Sabbaton. Okay? Now, the last two. This is a Day of Atonement. It's a statute. So the commandments would be seen in the sky in the last drama on the Day of Atonement when it finally takes place. The books are open. Number eight is the last feast. Feast of Tabernacles that we're in right now. Your reference is Hebrew Numbers 2708. It's a Moed. Hebrew number 4150. The first and the eighth days are binding, which are statutes. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 I hope this is helpful. He will speak against the Supreme God and oppress God's people. He will try to change the religious laws and festivals and God's people will be under his power for three and a half years, Daniel 7.25. This is the reference on today's English version. So from the year 538 AD to in the beginning of this prophecy, for 630 years the religious laws were changed and done away with. The remainder of the 260 <coughs> years, of 630 years, he changed the festivals for the pagan holidays. Your Christmas, your Thanksgiving, your Easter, your Ash Wednesday, okay, Valentine's Day, your birthdays. This is what was done, ladies and gentlemen. He received a deadly wound in 1798. That deadly wound was removing persecution with religious liberty that Napoleon inserted with his government and established it in France and Italy. So the wound was religious liberty. It removed persecution. In these last days, it's the opposite. Religious liberty will be removed and persecution will begin. Okay? So they removed your Hebrew number 4150, your Moeds, which are appointed times, and they removed your sacred seasons and the law found in the New Interpreter's Bible, Daniel 7.25. And so I inserted these in here because I know you're viewing them and you all want to quote from them, so I did us this favor. However, A, loyalty to God by observing His law, which is the Sabbath day, in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3, 
Exodus chapter 20, verses 8, 9, 10, and 11, is referring to the seventh day. B, except Sunday Sabbath, in other words, except the Sunday Sabbath, we will receive the mark of the beast. In other words, if society around the world accepts a Sunday Sabbath, they receive the mark of the beast. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, the evening and the morning was the first day. In Luke 24, verses 1 through 7, the first day. But Christ and the disciples, the disciples came and they seen that everything was opened. But Christ had resurrected early in the morning or the evening, excuse me, in the evening of the Sabbath. And you can read that in its entirety, ladies and gentlemen. Because if you really want to look at it, not how the Catholics inserted and changed the writings. You want to look at it the way it was really given. By using the Karaite calendar. Crucified on the 14th, dead in the tomb on the 15th, and on the 16th was the week of the Omer. And on the 17th was the harvest, the resurrection of the barley. The new law has its own spirit and its own feast which have taken the place of those appointed in the law of Moses. And they did that. If we would know the days to be observed, we must go to the Catholic Church, not to the Mosaic law. That's a lie, referring to the Torah. We must go to the Torah that gives us the whole complete view. Your reference is the Catholic Catechism, as quoted in the Signs of the Times, November 4, 1919. Therefore, the arrow is still pointed to the truth. In John 5, verse 39, verse 40, the witnesses of the scriptures are correct. Christ says, in the New Testament, as the physician John elaborates, search the scriptures, says Christ, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Yeshua HaMashiach. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. And this is who we go to, Richard. We go to Yeshua for forgiveness, to have eternal life. We serve Him because we love Him, not because we're being coerced. In reading, in love and kindness, the prophet says, In these last days there is a call from heaven inviting you to keep the statutes and the ordinances of the Lord. Signs of the Times, February 3rd, 1888. Satan also and evil angels are judged by Christ and his people. So we have the 144,000 that are translated, and we have the remaining great multitude from the beginning of time to the end. These 144,000, they shed their tears. This is what this represents. They shed their tears. The remaining great multitude, they have shed their tears as well, my brothers. But by the law, they were found worthy to receive eternal life. So Christ and his people will be the judge in regards to who lives in the kingdom. So when Christ was first resurrected, his trophies from the beginning of time that were height and stature were resurrected. The days of Noah. And in his time, now remember these people were tall. Even John the Baptist was resurrected, whose head was beheaded by Herod. Your reference is found in the 1884 Great Controversy, page 475. Satan also and evil angels are judged by Christ and his disciples. This is the foundation of the kingdom. His kingdom is set far blue where the Ten Commandments were written and given to Moses to give to the people. Let us close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Savior Yeshua, we ask for your blessings and your guidance. And we praise you for hearing and answering our prayers. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Also, I'd like to mention, for your notifications, subscribe, like, thumbs up, so that when our studies come out, ladies and gentlemen, you will be notified. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Have a blessed week. Amen.